Hello and welcome to another video of time series forecasting. So far I showed you four benchmark methods of forecasting. So in the future we'll develop more complex methods and any forecasting method that we'll develop later on will be compared with the, these methods. So let me show you another example of uh, these uh, four benchmark methods. In the previous example I showed you an example of uh, quarterly beer production data and we saw that the seasonally knife method was uh, relatively better as compared with the other two methods. Now in the previous example I did not use the drift method and in this video I'm going to show you a data set which will have a trend and in this case we'll apply the drift method and see how the drift method performs as compared with the mean forecasting method or average forecasting method and the naive forecasting method. So let's look at this example. So the data set that I'm using is uh, Google daily closing stock price and we can go ahead and look at the summary statistics. We can look at uh, the head and the tail of the data set. And here again, I'm extracting data for only specific uh, time period by using this uh, window function and I'm passing my data set into it. And then I'm extracting data for only 200 days and uh, I'm saving it as uh, Google 200. So let's go ahead and uh, save this data set. Next what I'm doing is I'm gonna uh, first extract the mean forecast from uh, this data set. This is our mean forecast or average forecast and I'm saving it as uh, this name. Next um, I'm using uh, RFW function which is random walk forecast and this method will give us the same forecast as we can get by applying a naive function instead of using a naive function i'm using this rwf function this function will give us the exact same uh, results as the naive function so let's go ahead and uh, forecast for the next uh, 40 days by using naive method and then our third forecasting method is uh, drift method and all we need to include here is we gonna include um, drift equals true in this function rwf in this way this method will be including um, the drift or historical change in the data set in our forecast so let's save all of these uh, results you can have a look at these uh, results by going here and pasting here and here you will get these uh, forecast for the next uh, 40 days from day 201 to day 240 but as i said in my previous uh, video it's better to plot these uh, forecasts rather than looking at these numbers so uh, my first argument here is our data set and then we're gonna auto plot the original data set which contains uh, google daily stock uh, closing prices from day 1 to 200. Then we are going to add another layer and this layer will include mean forecast or average forecast as uh, the first argument and then we're gonna turn off the prediction interval and then we're gonna call this series mean. Then we're gonna add uh, another layer on top of this and this layer will include random walk forecast or naive forecast. We're gonna call it naive and our third layer will include a random walk forecast with drift. We're going to call it drift. And then we're going to add title, x axis, and y axis, and legends, and look at uh, the graph of this series. So please note that we are not using seasonally naive method here because we know there is no seasonality in the data. So it is pretty useless to try to apply seasonally naive method on uh, this uh, time series. So black line again is our original data set and this data set is from day 1 to day 200 and we see that uh, mean forecast it's right here and it's kind of doing a pretty awkward job at uh, predicting uh, stock prices because what this method is doing it is uh, calculating the average and which is kind of here. Then we have naive method which is telling us that uh, the future stock price for day 201 up to 240 will be equal to our observed value at day 200. So this is also a constant number and it's giving us these forecasts. 
again both of these forecasts are kind of off a lot because we see that uh, there is a kind of a trend in the series and both of uh, these forecasting methods are doing a terrible job in capturing uh, that trend rather what we do is we include drift in the series and what this drift will do is it's going to calculate every change that we observe in this uh, series from day one to day 200 and then building on the last observed value on uh, day 200 it's going to include that uh, drift and uh, forecast and we see that uh, the forecast using the drift method is kind of uh, doing a better job as compared with the other two methods we can explore more sophisticated methods and any method that we'll use will be compared with these uh, simple methods we'll only use those sophisticated methods if uh, those are performing better than these uh, simple methods but we'll see that in some cases the simple methods are pretty good okay so these were the benchmark methods of forecasting in the next video i'm going to talk about uh, how to analyze whether our forecasting method is incorporating all the available information in the data set that is it's capturing all the information that we have in the series and using that information in uh, forecasting so i'll see you in the next video bye bye